Hello and welcome to GeForce. I'm Julian and we are here today to take a sneak peek at Battlefield 5's single player. I'm going to talk to Dev Eric Holmes. He's going to tell me what goes into making a great single player experience as we play through the war story Tira Lure. So Eric, you're going to play for us the third war story. Where does the name Tira Lure come from? It's French for skirmisher. And if you look up skirmisher, I believe it refers to a type of fighting which is kind of more disorganized, untrained fighting in the Napoleonic era. Traditionally used to break up formation fighting by fighting on the edges and kind of trying to pull the formations apart. So kind of like in Battlefield 1, this is more told from a memory point of view, right? Yeah, this is what we call a framed narrative. So we have an old version of our protagonist looking at memory cues, props, and he's telling you the story from a later time. So this war story is really about an attack on a gun battery. The French have tried to take it out, the French fail, and the t get their chance. These are French colonial soldiers. They're drawn from across the empire. In particular, these fighters are from Senegal. The t don't start off with the best gear. They weren't getting well equipped by the French. They're equipped with Ross rifles. They are equipped with the Chocha, and they have ruby pistols. But the most stuff that you're gonna want is in the hands of the enemies. So you're gonna want to scavenge big time to get the equipment you need to solve the problems ahead of you. So when you're telling these stories, how much of it is based on historical fact and how much creative license do you take? We try to ground everything in some sort of a account, some sort of factual basis. One thing that's been a little difficult with the T. Lure story compared to, say, the British SBS or Norwegian Resistance is there isn't a great deal of written records available for a lot of what they've done. So you have to dig a lot deeper to find out more about these fellas. Even the French themselves call this the Forgotten Landings because the history of it doesn't seem to have been as celebrated as much as other forms in the media. So we've been volunteered for battle, and it looks like a literal uphill battle. Yeah, so the enemies are supposed to be prepared. Like We have a front line here where the French soldiers that were sent in before, they failed, and now we're going in to try and take it. These machine guns in these positions are absolutely murderous, but there's lots of friendlies coming up as well. So you've got to try and work with these guys, try and see if the machine guns will aggro on someone else, and then mm. use that as a chance to move. So this looks familiar too from Battlefield 1. This is more like kind of introducing players also to the capture different right, points. the classic play. flag capture. Yeah, if maybe it's their first time, they haven't dove into much multiplayer yet. We talk about a lot these things called Battlefield moments. It so aptly describes kind of the chaos and the insanity of just anything can happen. How do you recreate that in a single player campaign? I think there's a mix between sort of systemic stuff that will just happen when you put people in the vehicles of Battlefield. It kind of emerges just out of the physical nature of the environment, but there's not really a big focus on vehicles in Tier Lure. It really is an infantry experience. There'll be vehicles popped in against you, but what we didn't want was the Tier Lure jumping into a Sherman and driving their way through because that really wouldn't be authentic doesn't, to where, who they were. Doesn't really fit, yeah. In the case of Tier Lure, we tried to build defenses using these systems. So there's a bunch of stuff I can destroy. There's also things like certain parts of the maps. If you're using explosives in the area, you can use that to create an indentation in the terrain. It'll buy you the chance to get past some guns or you know, basically create a little foxhole. That's what I mean by battlefield moments. I was noticing it more in the Norwegian resistance storyline, but there were a lot of different possibilities for me when I was choosing how I wanted to play. When you guys are building this game, is that something that you're looking to include in all the stories? Like here, how would you approach the situation from different routes? We wanted to construct a game that could be played multiple times, multiple ways, just like Battlefield really kind of has in its DNA. That fact that it's never quite the same, no matter how you play it. We definitely kind of scratched the surface last game, but we felt there was more room for that. And I think you'll find that across all the War Stories, there's more of that sense of player agency. There's a bunch of different gadgets, weapons, vehicles you can use to solve the problems. And we kind of leave it up to you as to how you're going to tackle the problems. Do you have a way you like to approach this level? Do you prefer to go guns blazing, or are you more coy and cautious? The best way to play these levels where you're advancing with a lot of friendlies is to stick with them. Otherwise, you're going to end off off on your own, and the enemies are all going to prioritize you. We're playing this on normal, and I can be pretty daring running in here, running and gunning, taking a couple of hits, backing off and regening. You play this on hardcore, it is going to be brutal. You're going to have to really test your skills about managing cover and staying out of danger because the hits that you take, how quickly you will go down, is very similar to multiplayer. One of the things you'll find through the war stories is you will find weapons hidden in the world using the various kind of upgrade systems there are for multiplayer. So you might find when you're playing through here, there's some really high end equipment that will take you quite a while to unlock in multiplayer, but you get to play with it here in the war stories because you've found it. Yeah, I've found quite a few of those through my playthroughs. They're always really interesting looking too. I like that in particular. They all seem to have customized looking paint schemes and textures and details that make them stand out from the vanilla weapons that you'll find in the world. If in doubt, hit the tank always go for the tank. 
Another thing about vehicles, facing hits matter. So more than in previous battlefields, hitting the side and even better hitting the back is much more effective. So if you see a tank, you're gonna to want to flank it. Do you think by representing these diverse stories, you know, Battlefield is a huge franchise with a lot of players. Do you think that's gonna reshape how people think about these wars from the past? One thing that we got after Battlefield 1 was we heard from school teachers, for example, saying that suddenly there was a bunch of spike of interest from students at schools learning about World War One, and people suddenly realized they didn't know so much about it. And I think it was two years ago, President Francois Holland gave citizenship to a number of surviving tier leaders to this day. I think it was 28 and had an official recognition ceremony. So there is some interesting kind of current contemporary social texture to what this story represents. It's not just this dusty old series of events that happened to your grandparents. There are people today still affected by the events that this story touches on. Well guys, that was just one piece of one war story, but there's lots more and it's all gonna come out when the game does and we'll be there for that. So if you wanna know more about Battlefield 5, stay tuned here to GeForce for more.